Hey everyone, Cody here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a really simple brushed, elegant, uh, abstract painting. Literally all we're going to be using is a, is a brush and three colors. I'm going to take this down real quick and then I will show you those colors. If I had any, and if I had some canvas, I would actually do this on canvas because it looks pretty good, but I'll just do it on here and cover the edges and then when I actually sell this painting, if I do, um, I will just mat it and uh, put it in a frame with a mat over it so that it covers these edges anyways. And whenever I sell these types of paintings on paper with the edges covered, I literally just tell the, you know, I put it right in the description that the edges are unfinished, but that it comes matted. Um, it comes matted and framed so that you know i'm not hiding anything um and it gives it that nice clean edge so not a big deal uh, let me grab some water real quick all right good <coughs> so we're going to start with the white uh you can see my my can has been through heck and back uh pop this bad boy open and I've already shaken it, so it should be good to go. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to do about two thirds uh, white. So we're going to go ahead and put that on there and we're just going to base coat it. Now, I mean, technically I could leave the, the paper white because um, it already comes that way. But I don't want to do that on purpose because one, I want it to seem professional. So if you looked at it up close, um, you know, it actually, you could tell it was painted. But another reason is that um, it's gonna help protect that paper. So if I just left it as plain paper, you know, it's, it's not gonna protect it because the paint kind of gives it a protected look. Also, what I'm doing here is I'm going to kind of pull the paint out and create these ridges. So what we're gonna do is when we make this painting, I'm gonna have the gold kind of, so basically it's gonna be white on top, purple on bottom, and then the gold is going to go over it and the gold is kind of going to be at an edge or an angle so it's going to kind of arc upwards and so we kind of want it to we want this uh, white paint to kind of stop so we're going to drag it down and we're going to drag it down further over here now you can't really see it and i apologize for that but we're dragging this white paint down. We're actually going to drag it down just a little bit more. Okay. So, actually, do I want to go down? No, I think that's okay. Alright, so you can't really see it, but the white is, um, it's about, it stops right about here. So kind of at an angle, which is what I want. Um, so I'm going to try to just pull it down as much as possible. There's two reasons for this one, to kind of get these weird brush strokes, which you'll see more of when I do the purple next, um, but also to dry the paint. So I'm really just trying to thin this paint out so that it dries faster, which it looks like it's already starting to do. So I think we're okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this off. I'm just going to wipe it on my apron here. Um, Make sure I got the rest off. You can't see it anyway down here, so really just kind of getting it off of the brush here. Okay, so next we're going to do our purple. I'll just kind of make sure that it's good to go. That's pretty good. All right, so now we'll move on to purple. Um, this is, uh, well, I actually don't remember which purple this is. I don't believe it's purple odyssey i think actually i'm gonna do this darker purple so this one that's not even purple <laughs> i was wrong i've been bamboozled uh this one is actually purple odyssey it's a dark purple you can see most of it here i'm gonna use this one this is the one that i want so we'll pop that open here and you can see that i have the word wet on here which means i've already diluted this can um so yeah you can see it's a little runnier than kind of normal so i've already diluted it 
Um, so I'm just going to put a little, a thin line across the bottom. Um, I probably don't need that much. I won't know until I start kind of pulling the paint out. Um, but we'll go ahead and start pulling it up. So essentially we want to make sure that we cover the whole bottom, right? Um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of do this. Where the brush strokes go up and yep, it's pulling some of that white. So I don't want to kind of drown it. <clears throat> so what we want is these... is these jagged brush strokes, I guess is what I meant to say. And so you can kind of get this by lifting the brush or tilting it at an angle, and it'll start to give you these uh, jagged brush strokes. So we're gonna do that. Uh, I should have, uh, I should have switched brushes. Let me see if I have it. Mm. Okay, so I actually have an angled brush here, so I'm actually going to switch over to that because it's got no white in it and the light is just making it a little too light. So we're going to kind of go over that. But also if you have the angled brush, then it just makes it easier to kind of get these random brush strokes. Now the problem with this brush is that this brush is kind of stiff, so it's creating these little uh, scratches. Now, I mean, it's part of the effect, so if you like the scratches, you could definitely weave them. I'm not sure how I feel about them, though. So, I kind of want this to go up. Um, actually, we could probably have it go up, like, right about here. And then go down, flip it over, and kind of go down. And then, and then just kind of do that. So I mean, we've got this here. Um, so now what I need to do is really just fill in this right here. I kind of want it solid. This brush is too stiff for me to do anything with. So a lot of my brushes are actually kind of ruined just because the, the gloss enamel, um, even if I soak the brushes, the gloss enamel kind of destroys them. So I tend to have to get brushes pretty, pretty often. And I don't really have any, any ones that are ruined, uh, to be honest with you. So I could switch to a heavy brush, but that's gonna, it's gonna kind of overpower it. So I'm not sure if I wanna do that. Yeah, all my brushes are kind of ruined. That sucks. All right, well, you know what? We're just going to deal with it. So what I'll do here is I'll just kind of go over it and just kind of fill it in. It's almost like when you use crayons. And you know how, like, crayons always, like, have, like, those little... Uh, the, like it's not fully, it doesn't fill in ever, like all of the, the, the picture like a marker would. You know what I mean? So when you use crayons, like no matter how many times you go over it, like some of the, the coloring of the paper you're coloring on comes through. That's what this, that's what this brush is doing because it's kind of stiff. I actually need to pick up some more brushes, but I don't use brushes very often, so I didn't even know that they were all bad. All right, so... I'll just kind of leave it at that. Um, I do want to make sure. Did I lose a bristle? Uh, oh, it curled. Okay, so let's do that. And I need to go over this more time, but um, I kind of need it to dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run a heat gun over it. This is, I think, just a 500. Uh, it's a 60 hertz or 120 VAC heat gun. It's really, it's, it's not very hot. I'm gonna put it on the low setting. Since I know it's warmed up, it takes about five, 10 seconds. 
I'm just gonna run it over it just to kind of get it to dry real quick so I can add one more layer. Come on. You know you want to dry. Come on. You can't, I don't know if you can really tell from where you're at, but it is starting to dry. Alright. So I'll go ahead and do the last layer. I feel deja vu right now, to be honest with you. I feel like I've done this before. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and just do one last layer to kind of fill any more gaps. Um, I've already got kind of the jagged edge so I don't really need to make that what I really want to do is just kind of fill in any of these little scratched gaps so I can kind of apply more of the paint here because I already have the shape really so I'll just pull that down and here I'm just trying to kind of define the shape so that's why I'm Doing that at an angle. And I'm just gonna pull that down. And pull that down. All right, so there we go. Now we got some thickness to it and you can't see you know, as much of the, the scratches. There's a little bit, but I, I, I think I can live with it. All right, so now we got a, some solid color here. I like it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the heat gun over it one more time because I actually need it to be um, solid. So I'm actually gonna soak this brush just because it's a good brush for what I'm trying to do here. And actually, let's see if I have another brush that I can use. All right, I found another brush. So I'll just use a smaller one. Uh, and we're going to use gold on that part. So I'll just give that a quick shake real quick. And then we'll dry this. Now you can do this with acrylic. I actually did a painting that was it was the white and it was dark blue at the bottom it's called wondrous winter i have a video about it um and that one i did with gloss enamel for the background but then i did gold on top and it looked pretty cool because the gold was acrylic so it was really thick uh almost like pat and pasto or you know some kind of like some paste so we'll go ahead and dry this real quick And the reason I don't use the high is because it, it starts to cook the paint. Um, I learned that on the first painting I did with this is like, I wondered like if I could do the high setting and it just started cooking the paint immediately, like started boiling and blistering and it was pretty gross. So go over this a few times. I don't really need the bottom dried all the way, but I do need this area where they meet to be dried. So we're gonna go ahead and really just kind of dry this area up here, the overlap areas. Okay. I don't know if you can see it, but it just started doing it again. And I'm pretty sure it's just because I was too close to it, but it started to boil. Now you're not gonna see it as much because I'm gonna cover it up, but 
You also have to keep the heat gun moving, so you don't want to keep it in one spot. Which I was moving a little slow, so I should have known, but I don't have too much experience on the heat gun yet. I just picked it up a couple weeks ago, so I'm still kind of learning and, and kind of getting the hang of it because, again, I haven't used it too much. So, just trying to solidify these wet areas. One issue with the boss enamel is if it's not hot outside, it takes a while to dry. Yeah, we should be pretty close to good. Should be pretty good. All right, so we'll just assume it is. All right, so we're gonna put that face up because it needs to breathe, and we will apply our final color here, gold. So now the gold is. Uh, so the other two colors, the white and the purple, are gloss enamel. They're Dun Edwards. It's a local paint brand. Um, the gold is actually just PPG Metallics, which I got from Home Depot. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and. Stir that real quick. I'll wipe off the excess here. And then we're going to go ahead and just do the gold. In an overlapping um, in overlapping layers. There we go. So now, the problem with this paint is that it's it's super thin, um, so you can kind of see through it, right? So you have to kind of do one of two things. You either have to apply a couple of layers, or you'd have to use acrylic, which is thicker. But even with acrylic, you still are going to be able to see through it if you use kind of thin layers. So it's just something to watch out for. Um, now, you can do one of two things. You can do these little like square type designs or you can just kind of um, like pull it out and do, you know, brush strokes. Pull these. I'm gonna pull this brush uh, kind of long. I want these like jagged, you know, looks here. So we're gonna pull that down. And we're gonna just cover up the edges of the two colors. Starting to take up some of the purple because it didn't dry all the way. Don't want that. So I think what I'll have to do is kind of let that dry and just go over it again. So we'll pull that out. And I'm just doing light kind of quick drags to pull the, the paint out here. All right. Okay, so I really like the design, actually. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and dry it, 
Uh, so we can apply one more layer of gold to really kind of cover up the, the seam between the two. I'm gonna try it on high from up higher and see if that helps. But it smells like it's smoking, so maybe that's not a good idea. So I guess we, we don't have a choice. We're just gonna have to kind of deal with it on low and dry the paint and just deal with it. But I can see that it's drying, so that's good. Just make sure that that's all good, that's all good, that's all good. Okay. Again, it's starting to cook it, and we don't want that. Yeah, you can see that it started to bubble here, so what we'll probably have to do is pull a little bit of the gold over it. And that's the let. Kind of. Oh. Okay, so we can't you can't put up if you apply another plate another layer, it's probably gonna smear it or or tear it. You don't want that. We need this to set so we can apply the next layer. Come on. Okay, I think we're good. Looks like it, looks like it. We'll just kind of deal with it. All right, so we'll start on this side because this side dried a little faster. So we'll go ahead and just, we don't have to go all the way to the edges. We really just need to kind of cover up the, the middle part where the seam is. So we'll just kind of pull it up. And if it, if it overlaps what we've already done, that's okay. Like if it goes out to the edges. So that's okay. We'll just pull that up. Pull that up. And then we'll pull that down. And we'll use some of this excess here. And we'll leave that. So we'll just bring that down. Okay, so it did tear it a little bit. Can't really see it, but it, it did tear just a little bit. So I'm trying to trying to be a little bit careful. However, if you layer it a lot, it's kind of cool because it'll give it that uh, like a 3D feel and look. So I'm okay with it, um, you know, overlapping because it, it gives it that, like a 3D texture, which I can't get with, usually I can't get with gloss enamel because it's really thin compared to acrylic, so. We'll just bring that down, give that a little definition there. Definition, a little definition. Give that a little definition. There we go. Nice. So because it tore a little bit, it's a little uneven right there. So I'm trying 
to honestly even it out. So, which I think it's I think it's okay. I'll just even that out. <clears throat> so the only part that bothers me is this one right here. And it's just because it's not flush. So see if I can I think I'm losing the definition. So now, all right, I need to leave it alone before I mess it up. <clears throat> so, I mean, that's pretty much it. So once this dries, I mean, you know, it's gonna be a consistent gold all the way across. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, that actually is it. So, I'm gonna close those up real quick. And I know this was a little bit of a longer video, I apologize. But let me go ahead and show you guys the painting. So this is it. Um, honestly, I know the, the lighting's a little bad here. I'm gonna see if I can adjust this. Maybe, maybe that helps, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. No, I don't know. Just show you the painting. Okay, so this is the final painting. Um, it's not much, but I do like these kind of elegant ones. Actually, let me go ahead and, uh, I just got paint on my phone. That sucks. Um, well, I was going to tear the, uh, the tape off, but it's not going to matter because it's not going to look much different, but that's pretty much it guys. So this is a simple painting that you guys can make at home. You literally just do the one color on the top and then the one on the bottom and then go over it with gold in the middle. That's it. I mean, it's really that simple. It's just a simple abstract that once it's dry, it looks really good. Um, in fact, I'm going to... Do I have it? If you haven't already seen the painting I'm talking about, I'm going to go ahead and get it down. So give me one second. I'm still here. And I should edit this out, but it's fine. Okay, so I've got the painting here. So I'll just put it up on my paint rack. So this is what it looks like large, okay? And I think that the, the colors on this one are just really good. Um, and that's why it works a lot better on a large one. So this is a dark blue and then white, the same one. And then this is the, what I was talking about with the acrylic gold. So the acrylic gold gives you this nice kind of like cool texture. And literally I just kept dabbing it over and over and over and over and over. And it made those little ripples. Uh, but it's cool because it's got like this little kind of shrinking and, you know, going out. Uh, like a shrinking and expanding pattern where it's almost like mountains but or like a sound wave or something. So I guess I could have done it on that one. I didn't, but it is what it is. You can kind of make whatever design you want, but I, I like the idea of like a rigid kind of thing. Anyway, that's it for the videos, guys, or the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. it. gave you some ideas or inspiration. Um, but that's it, guys. I'll catch you guys in another one. Take care.